Hello, my name is Rusty Coons, and I have with me Eric Stahl, King of the Bagger Series racer and owner of Jiffy Tune Dino Motorcycle Shop. How you doing, Eric? Good, Rusty. How you doing? I'm great, man. Thanks for being here, man. I like that bike you got there behind you, too. Hey, thank you, man. That's the uh, King of the Baggers bike that we just got done racing out there in Laguna Seca. Beautiful, beautiful. I want to talk about that, but I want to go back into your history with motorcycles, how you got started with it, a little bit leading up in your life through all the stuff, motocross and everything, and then we'll get into the Harleys, okay? So tell yes, me sir. about it. How old were you when you got, first time you got your first bike around two wheels? You know, man, I was, uh, I can remember vividly, I was three years old and uh, my father got me into motorcycles. He's always been a Harley guy his whole life. Uh, and I can remember him getting me one of those little Yamaha 50 Trizingers, little yellow three-wheeler. I remember those. Yeah. I can, I mean, I've got, my family's got pictures of me riding them around in cowboy boots and no shirt, no, no, sh you know, no shorts, just boots and boots and chonies and having a good time on those, man. That's where it all started. Um, from there, you know, I slowly moved into 50s class, little peewee 50s, the little older I got. And uh, I remember riding those around at the local racetracks, the old De Anza, the old Paris and Carlsbad racetracks back in the, you know, the 90s. And then from there, we, we, moved, we moved into bigger bikes. The older we got, you know, the bigger the bikes got. Uh, went into an 80 class bike. And from there, we raced those all over Paris, all over Southern California. And the race series had a great time doing it and so let me let went, me ask you so you, your dad was involved with you uh helping train you and take you to all the races and all that oh yeah and my father and i are best friends uh he's he's actually a big big part of my motorcycle career um being passionate of two wheels himself uh he had a lot of influence on me um and and uh -huh. the two -wheel industry and and uh, eventually now to going into harleys but as we as we slowly went from dirt bikes we moved into uh the bigger class dirt bike and we started doing freestyle motocross and we did that here locally uh in lake elsinore area uh up until about my i would say early 20s and then right about then i uh i was i was sort of done getting hurt you know sort of done flying off and falling and, and bouncing off the dirt over you know 100 foot jumps and 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 just uh it was enough breaking arms and i got enough metal and steel and fingers and legs and I was, I think I was done. So we, uh, we, we went to the street. I mean, why not? Never going to quit two wheels, but it was more into the street. Um, and ever since high school, I was eighth grade going into high school, man, reading the auto trader. Um, a lot of guys don't even know what that is, but there's an old book auto trader. I remember looking at the Harley section, looking at sportsters. I, I had the, I had the belt buckle. I was in, uh, algebra getting ready to go into high school man and I, I was getting ready to get my motorcycle license and all i wanted was a harley davidson's american iron i've always been on dirt bikes as a kid and so right when i turned 15 i went down and got me a motorcycles permit and i went down and got me a little sportster and rode that thing to high school every day man thought i was cats me out that was a great <laughs> great you know into a motorcycle career and a great how my love for harley davidson and the brand and the industry started, you know, seeing, seeing guys on motorcycles and, you know, leather jackets and small helmets, you know, I'd grown up at the beach area and watching these guys go up and down PCH, you know, as a kid and just thinking to myself, I'm going to do that one day, man. So here it is, you know, um, now, I, let me uh, ask you I, this. so were you, were you racing the motocross during that period of time or were you done with it already? Yeah. In high school, I was always with motocross. I was always on a dirt bike. I, I never okay. stopped with cycles. Um, I, I was wasn't really racing them as much, but I was still every other day. I was that guy that would you know go to work and uh, have his dirt bike in the back of his truck, and as soon as he got off work, was headed straight to the the, the hills to go ride and catch the last couple hours of daylight before uh, uh, you know before before the next day had to start. So did you go up to uh, Saddleback. You know, I would go to Saddleback, but actually what, what I would really do is I'd come over the Ortega Highway uh, and drop up right into Lake Elsinore. And there was a bunch of great spots because of all the talent that would ride in these local hills, a bunch of big jumps. And, you know, you'd meet some of the local talent and a lot of the a lot of the guys and you get to ride with them and, you know, feed off each other. And it just helped me hone my skills in so much more. And, yeah. uh, you know, doing uh, motocross jumping gaps and going through ravines and coming out you know 30 foot kickers and 
just hundred foot kickers, depending on what you wanted to do, doing like no footed can cans and the supermans. And, you know, it was just, man, it was an awesome, it was an awesome deal. I, I had a hell of a time doing it. And then I think that's sort of what brought me to where my shop is now in like Elsinore, you know, being familiar with the area coming over here as a kid to ride. Um, you know, I just, I think maybe it made me want to be here to where I could always go on a motorcycle and do something. So I love it. Yeah, passionate you're, right. Too. you're right there. You don't have to travel far to go out and practice from where you're at there. huh? Not at all, man. You know, I'm, I'm in the Mecca of it. I'm in the thick of it. So that's, uh, that's where now where we have our, our shop. I went from, you know, working construction as a young man, um, bought a piece of property out here in uh, Lake Elsinore, California um and had desires and hopes and dreams of one day owning a shop uh and being able to work on motorcycles for a living and slowly as i was able to uh build a garage you know i i slowly built my shop to what it is today um you know i take a lot of pride in being a, a small business owner but also a man of many hats to, to uh you know build what i have and have a lot of pride in it and now i've turned this into Southern California's best performance shop, um, in, in my opinion, you know, we're over here building big motors, camshafts, great braking, high end suspension, dyno tuning. Um, we're racing professionally all over the country. Um, you come to our shop, you can talk to owner, you can talk to builder, you can talk to the guy that's the tuner, and you can actually talk to a guy that rides a bike at the level that you want to ride at and can tell you why things are happening, why your bike's goofy. and and you know, a lot of guys can talk about it, but we're out there putting the down to the pavement and we can, we can swear by it. Yes. So. So you got this uh, shop going <clears throat> back in 08, about 15 years ago and you're doing yeah. performance and you're, you started going to these track days and just racing it, whatever you had and, and uh, bikes you'd worked on and all that originally before you got into actual uh, King of the Bagger racing and stuff. Right. 100%. So, you know, being a shop owner and wondering, all right, how can I, how, what's the best business card other than, you know, showing people what I build here, how it performs and how good it is. Um, you know, anyone can talk about it, but I figured you put it on the racetrack, show people one, I build a bike that can sustain all of the highest, uh, you know, mechanical uses possible with these machines that are air cooled. At the same time, you know, use the best braking as possible and show people that we can hold together, that the tunes are good and that we can operate at the highest level that there is available here with Harley Davidson. And so that slowly we would start doing track days to go out there and prove these things because we couldn't do it on the street anymore. You could only have to go through the canyon so fast before it was dangerous or you could only, you know, you could there weren't you couldn't hit certain braking markers take it to the next level we had to take it to the racetrack so by taking it to the racetrack it opened up a broad spectrum and now i'll tell you man rusty from the very beginning we we never we were we didn't think it was going to go like it is now um we were out there you know just as amateurs beginners having a great time you know high five and man you scraped a peg you're yeah man that was awesome did you see that you know and now you know we're out there going around corners and our elbows 12 inches off the ground so <laughs> come a long ways and um, you're and you're like competing against factory teams with semis oh 100 percent. you know i'm uh hmm. i'm i uh three years ago i was top privateer um last year i missed it by a couple of different privateers but i'm i'm one of the top privateers in the country racing against factory screaming eagle which is factory harley davidson we race against factory indian uh vance and hines um against Saddleman, some big, big factory back teams. And, uh, you know, I do it out of a 2,500 square foot shop uh, with me and the guy that works here with me. And uh, we loaded up in the back of our pickup truck and a uh, little 12 by 12 trailer, man. And we hit the pavement, you know, and we're, we're nipping at their heels. We're, uh, we're doing everything we can within our means. And uh, we're, 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 we're right at the back with them and uh, just having a great time doing it being able to travel the country, see different places, try different foods, and at the same time, good old wholesome racing. So, so uh, you know, always from way back in the day, there was always a rivalry between Indian and Harley-Davidson. Yes. I know that's got to be strong right now, right? 
Oh man, you, it is, it is, it is, it is very big. The rivalry, um, you know, we raced the uh, King of the Baggers, which is the highest uh, level of road racing in the country, which is with Moto America, which is the pro series and they, uh, Indian, they, they bring out with no stops. Um, they bring out a semi, um, they've got, you know, six to eight guys working on a bike. Um, you know, they've got a crew of 25 guys for two motorcycles. And, uh, you know, there's guys out there that you can, you can tell, man, that I don't even think they've ever swung a leg over a bike, but they're working on a computer or doing something to that machine to make it faster. <laughs> How are they doing? You know, they, they do, they, those Indians do fly. I, I do have to give it up to them. They are a fast machine and they are, uh, they are running strong, but you know, yeah. there's nothing like Harley Davidson. So yeah. Screaming Eagle there, got that number one plate and we had it last year and we, we want to keep it going. Well, you know, the, there's a saying, you know, if it races on Sunday, it's on the street on Monday kind of a thing. And 100%. that's the, when you've got a rivalry like that going, it pays off for everybody, both companies and the riders that are buying the, the technology in the end, because all that stuff makes its way to the street eventually, you know? You know, and, and I'll tell you, it's, it's really cool to be where I'm at right now because I'm working with the factory teams and I'm getting these factory prototype parts. And, um, you know, being now going on our third, fourth year of professional road racing with Screaming Eagle, seeing these prototype parts come to me, onesie, twosie, so we can put them in the race bike and then working on a customer's bike that's a 2023 and seeing these parts finally getting into these uh, factory, how do you say, production machines um, yeah. is awesome, you know, and that they're actually using what we're putting down there on the, on the racetrack and it's making these machines better for the end consumer. I mean, look at the the technology on the new Harleys compared to what they were even 15 years ago. You know? Yeah. It's amazing. It's, they've given us an amazing platform with this Milwaukee 8 system over the past years. The, the map platform is great to work off of. There's another new platform, which is their RevMax platform that came out a couple of years back in their uh, Pan American and now in their Sportster. And that platform, you know, is... Uh, is 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 great it's fast sounds good um and so harley's doing some cool stuff right now so with the pan america um tell me a little more about that bike what's the horsepower on that one you know the pan american man that's a that's a that's a fun bike um those things come out of the box with 135 horse um we do some small modifications to the exhaust system and some tuning and you can easily get 150 horse out of those bikes without doing any major motor mods, no top end work, no porting, no polishing. And it's probably the most bang for your buck as far as power. Um, and, you know, they, they rev to the moon. Now, don't get me wrong. It is water cooled. It doesn't have that potato, 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 potato. But, you know, things are changing, man. The future's here. Oh. And a lot of that older stuff is we're seeing it go away. And I don't know if it's because of emissions or... People just don't want to go fast anymore, but, you know, we'll see. You remember, you remember the uh, V-Rod Destroyer? Oh, yeah, very much. That was real, a... man. The bike out of the box was a monster. Yes, it was. Yeah, That's that, yeah. that V-Rod motor, you know, and everything. But is there some of that technology in this new uh, Pan American motor? You know, I, I think there is. There's quite a bit. And that, that motor is very similar to this motor where they use some of that technology. I think the cylinder and head design and the valve design is a little bit different, but the bottom end of these motors are very similar. Um, yeah. And the out, outer case in them looks very similar. But, you know, kudos to Harley for getting into the adventure series. I mean, yeah. they had to have to keep up with those those guys that are all doing the adventure bikes. You know, you see the guys on the BMWs, but Harley's Harley's got a market for it now, and I think they'll do well with it. Yeah. It's a the other thing I like is is the fact that they got the transmission and the motor integrated in the same case, which is a smart move. You know what I mean? It cuts down on on weight, you know? 100%. It cuts weight and also, you know, the handling. These things handle like they're on rails. By having the weight down low like that, um, mm -hmm. it allows that your suspension up front rear bias and be able to turn these things in in and out of the corners and they turn in fast and and you know a lot of people looked at a pan american and told me i was crazy when i told them i was going to race one but when i saw it you know i knew there was a lot of fat on it that could be cut down and it could be a potential you know kick-ass little kick-ass machine and uh 
the one we have now, you know, we put a front end off an XR 1200, just use a little bit older technology from Harley Davidson from one of their race bikes, but put it onto a, a new version. And then uh, we built some custom tail sections and some custom uh, body work for it. And uh, it's doing very well. It's doing very well on the racetrack. It's keeping up with the Ducati monsters. It's keeping up with some of them Suzuki's. Um, it's keeping up with them KTM's. And those are some, some fat, fast factory European Japanese production machines also. So also, we're pretty what are you doing on the brakes? You're working with Lindell? Oh yeah, hundred percent, man. You know, um, there's there's no other better brakes out there. Once you get to the race level or the level that we ride at, you have to have the best braking. Uh, that's yeah. the only thing these things to stopping. You know, we come out of a straightaway, 150, 160 plus mile an hour into a 90 degree corner. You know, you've got to have some Lindell brakes with some Brembo calipers and uh, really have your braking game on point. Um, that's huge. There's a lot of things, you know, we're using uh, carbon fiber parts and carbon visionary, you know, we're using uh, resolution uh, performance motors. Uh, we're doing, we're, we're case boring them. We're making them square motors. We're doing oversized valves, port haulers, bigger throttle bodies, big injectors. Um, then I put them over in my dyno and, and I dial them in. I just, I sit in there in the dyno and I just get them tuned to perfection so we can take them out and uh, hopefully do our best. What about the chassis on the bagger series? What, what are you running? So basically on the chassis on the bagger series is a uh, road glide. So I, uh, I had a little incident I'll tell you about, um, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, we were on our way to a race in Milwaukee. And, um, unfortunately I, at that time I had an older Dodge truck, one of the mold 12 valves and it caught fire. And when it caught fire, it lit up my truck It lit up my toy hauler. It lit up, uh, Pretty much everything. I lost everything. My whole racing career for, for you know five years built on plus within an hour, uh, somewhere between Odessa and Midland. So we got a little joke around the shop. You know, it must be in Odessa. But uh, anyway, so when that happened, Harley Davidson factory got a hold of me and told me how important that I was to their race series and that I needed to get out to Milwaukee and I still couldn't miss that race and that they had a bike there at the factory waiting for me with this 131 crate motor that they were currently running with a swing arm that they weren't going to use, but it was good enough to get me up and going. And, uh, you know, they contacted me and it was funny, man, because there was a lot of people reaching out to me on Instagram. There are a lot of these guys like, you know, and I was thinking, all you know, I wanted to do a fundraiser or a car wash or a bike wash. And I was just, I was finally, I was done. And, uh, they were reaching out to me and it says Harley Davidson motor company. So it was HDMC. And I was just like, oh, man, not another club event, you know, guys wanting to do a fundraiser. And then finally, one of these corporate guys reached out and says, hey, stupid, that's the corporate trying to get a hold of you. So I called them back on a Sunday and uh, flew out on a Wednesday. They gave they uh, put me up and uh, we, we were over there at the House of Harley uh, in, in Milwaukee, one of the first dealerships ever that came out of Harley Davidson. Uh, had a lift there, a couple techs. Um, General manager, Tommy Donnelly was very cool. Got me all set up, drove me around, took me to dinner and gave me a couple of guys. And we went over to the factory together in a trailer. And I met uh, Screaming Eagle race team uh, manager and Jason Keel. And, you know, some of the, the lead techs were there. And man, they did a little video shoot that's on Moto America on how they gave me everything. And, you know, it was a, it's been a long time since, since I almost came to tears, man. But that day, you know, it, it really struck a nerve with me that, I might be doing something good in this industry for the factory to reach out and, and think that I was important enough to still run the series after I lost everything. Yeah, and I still, get I still get emotional about it, man. I'm starting to tear up now, you know, <laughs> uh, it's just yeah. one of those things. Uh, I strive to be the best in this industry. I strive to give everybody the best uh, bang and the most bang for their buck and uh, treat everybody fairly. And uh, I think it paid off, man. I think, I think somebody noticed and, uh, it came back, so pretty stoked you know, on that. What's cool is you guys are competitors. You're on the track fighting with each other, you know, every race. And when something like that happens that's devastating to your racing career, they step up and help. You know, that's great. That's really honorable for Harley to do that, you know? It, it, it really was, man. And, and I'll tell you, it, it made me even more of a believer in the brand. And, yeah, sure. uh, yeah. And... and Made it made me, you know, a believer in myself that I was good enough to be out there with those guys and that I was supposed to be there. So, yeah, well, obviously, man, you've plowed the road, man. You've done a lot of work 
you know? Yeah, super stoked, you know. Um, uh, Moto America came out and gave me and uh, an old partner of mine the recognition of being the heart and soul of the whole race series. And, uh, you know, that's a lot to me. It means a lot to me to have done something like that and uh, help the motorcycle industry in one way or another grow into a performance uh, side of it and see that it's helping everybody as a whole. So right now you're at your shop right now, obviously uh, you're getting a lot of uh, people coming in for tuning after they see all the racing and the performance. You know, you're, you're, you hit the nail on the head. Like you said, Rusty, uh, you know, race on Sunday, sell on Monday, brother. Um, I, I got, you know, blowing up my phone left and right. I'm very fortunate. You know, I, uh, I run a very, very great little business. I do all my work by appointment only. I'm that guy. I don't need a business card. I don't, I don't need a big sign up in front. As a matter of fact, I prefer not to have too many people stop in too often because I don't get much done sitting here yeah, talking. You gotta work. Yeah. Yeah. People don't understand that, man. Like, at my shop, people show up with a case of beer. I said, I can't take it. You know, yeah. I'm, 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 hey, we're working right now, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> as much as you want to, and you don't want to shy away from and make them feel like you're you, you're dogging them. But at the same time, you know, you got someone's got to keep the lights on. And uh, that's man. how I pay for my. <laughs> you know that that case of beer. I mean, even drinking one, you take out an hour. There's an hour's billing right there that you fell yeah. behind. You know what I mean? You got to. Business is business. You know what I mean? Friends are friends. And business is business. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm very happy, very fortunate for the reputation I've built myself. And I, I, I just want to continue to grow. And I, I feel if I get the right shot, we can just keep going and moving this forward and forward and make this thing expand. I, I, I'm having a great time doing it. I'm living a dream, man. I get to talk to guys like you. I get to meet Harley customers all day. And I get to race them on the weekend. And uh, – and I'll tell you, man, it's it's awesome because my family, my, my little girls, they think their dad's a superhero. You know what I mean? They get racing a motorcycle on TV and they're eight and 13 years old. My oldest is named Harley. Um, if that shows you how committed I am to this industry. <laughs> right on, man. Doing what you love, man. 100%. You never work a day in my life. Well, you know what? It's been great having you on here. You got anything else? I, I want you to give a shout out on your uh, shop's website and all that before we sign off, okay? Yeah, it'd be great, Rusty. Um, basically, JiffyTune.com is my website. I am JiffyTune. Um, we are JiffyTune Dino. We are JiffyTune Racing. Um, we are JiffyTune. Uh, we'd like to shout out to all the sponsors, everybody that's helped me get here, you know? Um, and yeah, go ahead. One of the, you want to yeah, one of the hugest... Uh, companies and brands that has been in my backing and helping me from day one would be Lindahl Brakes. Um, the guys over at Lexan, Revolution Performance, uh, Luke and Molly, uh, Carbon Visionary, um, a lot of the sponsors out there. If I, if I forgot you guys, everybody that's helped me get to this point, that's helped me either from prior race teams that wants to be in future race teams, uh, it never goes unappreciated. And uh, it's been all good times and, and thumbs up and great laughs, man. Right on, man. Really good having you on here, Eric. Look forward to coming out Thanks. watching the race. I appreciate it, man. I'm looking forward to having you out there and uh, coming in the pits and cheering us on. You got it, man. Talk to you later. <laughs>